Hello, I'm Anna Woltus, and welcome to uh, a theory episode where I'm theorizing about something. And what am I theorizing today? I am theorizing about none other than Yeah, that's right. Beating free sieve on hard in one hour or less. That is going to be the theory today. And now I have to be honest. When I first saw someone suggesting that I try this in the comments section on one of my videos, I thought my first reaction was that is asking the impossible. You can't do that. That's not possible. But uh, I have, I still haven't crunched the math on it. But I'd say that there is a plausibility to being able to do this, and there are a few important things to think about when doing this. And of course, the most important aspect of all this is time management. And by that, of course, I oof pressed a, an accidental key there. Of course, by that, I mean to say that you need to manage your time well and efficiently so that you can meet that time limit. So there are a few different aspects to time management here. And those are, of course, uh, I'll, I'll put three of them the three that I could think of at the top of my head. And those would be, of course, um, I guess the way to put this would be um, efficiency of choices or to be more accurate, efficiency of clicks and rate of clicks and of course um, engine limitations. I'm not, I'm not a fast typer, if uh, you've noticed that by now. I've never been really good at typing fast. Anyway, and what do I mean by these things? Efficiency of clicks is very important here. And what is it? By that, of course, I mean how effective are you or how efficient are you at making the right choices in the game and clicking on the right things in order to win the game in the least number of clicks possible. That is one way to save a lot of time when playing the game. And the second one is rate of clicks. How fast are you at carrying out those actions? And of course, that is probably the one thing that I personally, in my, in my series on Prussia, on FreeSiv Prussia, you can go watch that. I am probably not up there with that because I do a lot of dilly-dallying, I do a lot of explaining, I I play around a bit, and so enough, of course that means that everything is inefficient and my rate of clicks is actually very low because uh, sometimes in a video I might not get much done because I'm just busy talking. For example, right now, I'm not clicking a lot right now because I'm talking, I'm trying to explain things. And of course, if I were to try to beat free sieve on hard in one hour or less, exclamation marks one, uh, that's a, an old meme, I would have to really up my APM, my actions per minute. And of course, the final part here is engine limitations and this is 
the part that is outside of the player's control, out, completely outside of the player's control. For example, how long is the end turn lag going to be? How long is the AI going to deliberate on what decisions to make? How fast is that calculating? And also, how fast is your computer at handling those things as well? And, and though, and so these things are just the limitations of the hardware and the software involved in all in this whole process. And so time management, of course, is how you're going to achieve doing this in one hour. Now, what this essentially amounts to is a speed run. speedrun of a game now of course there are some things that are notable among a lot of speedruns and games that involve a lot of speedruns games that are popular for speedrunning that's what i'm trying to say and of course the thing here is that uh the rng is bad for speedrunning And that, of course, by that I mean random number generator, the randomness of a large turn-based st strategy game that has its world generation engine is going to be very difficult for uh, a player to adjust to if the player wants to really make things work with that. So uh, by that I mean, of course, that randomness is very difficult for speedrunners to deal with because a lot of times, a lot of games require a certain pattern in order to solve, but if there's a randomness, it means that you have to focus just that much more in, o in order to overcome that randomness in order to make sure that you can win the game in a reasonable amount of time or to be more accurate in a completely unreasonable amount of time that is completely unreasonable honestly one hour on hard come on i mean we're going to get to that later but there are a few ways to increase some of these things uh, not the engine that's completely out of my control unless I get a really, really good computer that somehow processes things really fast. Of course, that might help a little bit, but um, one thing that's important here for the efficiency of clicks is getting a... Uh, I'm not... Okay, let's use this color. Standardized build order. What is a standardized build order? Well, that, of course, is the order in which you build buildings in the game. Um, a good way to look at this is just think about what buildings you want to build and in what order. Now, of course, an important thing to note here that is going to make doing that difficult is the fact that you don't start the game with having all the buildings unlocked to build. And this, of course, means that you're going to have to work on a flowchart process rather than just a list process. And by that, I mean that you should have a flowchart that tells you, that asks you a number of questions that to which you can say yes or no, and then you arrive at what the correct thing to build in a city is. And this flowchart should right away allow you to rapidly decide which buildings to build and if possible, allow you to uh, choose maybe 10 or 20 different uh, things ahead of time in the build order so that you spend less time going in and out of the build screen on a city because of course due to engine limitations that takes its own amount of time so it's more efficient 
to simply choose everything that you're going to build in a town for the next uh, 50 turns at once. So that really is going to help in efficiency. And of course, another important thing is desired wonders. Because of course there are different wonders and they do different things and sometimes it may be more efficient to not take a wonder than to take a wonder. Now of course the AI, as I've seen in my series, really isn't that good at uh, staying diligent and finishing a wonder. Now of course that may just be because of a difficulty I'm playing on, but you need to make sure that depending on which victory condition you're going for, it uh, really is going to affect what uh, wonders you're going to aim for. And that, of course, also affects where you go on the tech tree. So that brings me to the next level uh, tech. You need to, or to be more exact, tech order. you need to be able to choose uh, which technologies are the best to go for. Now, this is actually going to be a little bit easier than doing the, the build order with a flowchart because you can already ahead of time see all the technologies. Now, of course, that being said, you, as far as I know, you can't just queue up the whole tech tree by going down different paths that's not a function in the game but uh, you should be able to make goals in the tech tree as to where you're going to go next and that is going to be very important and also in which order you're going to attain certain key techs in which order are you going to uh, have technology goals and that can be just a straight up list of uh, technology goals that you can write. And of course, the one thing that is going to mess you up here is that, of course, there is some randomness to the game. And in some situations, you may want to go for a certain tech sooner rather than later if uh, certain situations arise. Therefore, uh, it's important to have a list, a, a standardized order in which you're going to go for all the techs, but leave open the possibility for an eventuality that is going to force you to change that order and be prepared to do that and know how you're going to deal with that when that arises. So that is really going to be an important thing. But one thing that I think we've really skirted around is of course goals and by that I mean the victory condition yes this is going to be extremely important okay so there's three different ways to win free sieve so one is uh, I would call it the conquest where you take over all the cities and destroy all units from every other sieve, which uh, is possibly achievable. Uh, the other one is technology, the technology victory. You launch your spaceship and you automatically win. This one is, of course, focused very much on doing a lot of research. And the final one is the time victory in which you win once all the turns in the game have ended. So, uh, um, unfortunately, I would say that this one is out of the question uh, because I don't know how fast the game uh, can end turns, but... I would say that if you're going to play a game where you're getting a good score, so you need to have enough efficiency of clicks 
and rate of clicks in order to both get a good score and end turns fast enough so that within one hour the game has completed and you have the top score then you win i think that there i don't know if that's possible to be honest i don't think it is um it would be very difficult to do so because of engine limitations and also uh the fact that you only have one hour to work with uh, in order to have good efficiency i don't think that that's going to work now the conquest and the technology victories there's some things to keep in mind there's two different ways to play a game and get victory there's um the short path the long path and the balanced path now what do i mean by this what is the short path well the short path is if you cram everything you can right away into uh whichever victory condition you're looking for which means uh you for example you build tons of military units as fast as you can um, while also still trying to build cities and get technology so that it, you can actually kill enemy units. Uh, so that would make the short path very difficult for anyone to do um, who wants to go for a conquest victory because it means that you're not building a lot of city improvements, you're not uh, building a lot of tile improvements, you're not getting as much research. It's probably a bad idea to go the short path for conquest or the short path for technology uh, in just trying to get to tech right as fast as possible. So the short path is probably a very bad idea, even though we're trying to save time. Burning out your sieve right away probably is not the way to go about it. So what is the long path? The long path uh, also can be defined as the uh, path of uh, two phases. You have two phases in this path. There's the production and consumption. So what do I mean by this? By this I mean that the first of the two phases in the long path production is that you try to produce uh, all the things that are necessary to win, but you're not actually actively seeking to win right away. And consumption is when you then turn your entire economy, for example, in the conquest, you would turn everything you can suddenly to war. Or if you're on a technology path, you just up your research budget to the limit. And those are the two ways to, not the two, well, those are the two ways to win, but those are the two parts of this process. So what you have to do here is you spend the early game and part of the middle game perhaps, although let's be honest, you don't want to get into the late game because that'll really push your time limit. You spend the early game building a very good sieve that is going to have a lot of production and a lot of research capability and just generally building everything up, getting all the city improvements and doing that. And then you spend the late game uh, essentially going full throttle, building pure military units if you're going conquest, or uh, going full-on research budget if you're going for a technology victory, just trying to consume, essentially, everything that you've produced so far and win. For example, uh, a good analogy to make here is building a fire 
and you're going to cook a meal. You need to cook a meal. You've got one hour to cook a steak and you need to build a fire capable of cooking a steak and you need to be completely done within one hour. That's an interesting cooking challenge, actually. I'd, I'd love it for someone to, to do that, uh, maybe on some TV channel or on YouTube, just uh, or not even record it, just tell me afterwards. Do a challenge among friends. You have to take a steak, go out into the wild, and you have one hour to gather the materials needed to build a fire in order to cook your steak. And also, you need to have the time to cook the steak as well. So, the two components of this are gathering the wood and and uh, the fuel, the kindling, etc., in order to build the fire and having enough fuel to burn the fire hot enough and long enough in order to cook the steak. And once you've got, once you think you've got enough fuel, you're going to light the fire and cook your steak. But if you spend too much time gathering fuel and you light the fire, you might uh, end up not having, not being done on time because your steak is still raw at the end because you spent too much time gathering the fuel. Or if you don't spend enough time gathering the fuel, you end up having uh, not enough fuel to cook the steak and you need to suddenly, halfway through cooking, figure out a way to rapidly gather what you can in order to finish. And that's what I'm talking about. Production and consumption. You, you produce the pile of wood to burn and then you consume it in fire. And at the end, one hour has passed. Is your steak cooked? Yes or no? And that is what it's all about in the long path. Anyway, the balanced path is, um, I'd say, probably a very standard play style where you start out early on getting a good unit. And for example, in Conquest, you would start out early on at trying to conquer places, but you're not trying to rush it. You're trying to make sure that your economy is stable, uh, you're doing plenty of research so that you can continue and that is going to, of course, make sure that you can do it. Now, of course, if you're too slow, if you don't expand fast enough, you're going to end up with uh, being at a disadvantage when the time st when the t clock really starts ticking towards the end and you're going to have to rush and you're going to suddenly have to enter into the consumption phase um, of course the short path is just pure consumption phase with little to no production phase the balance path you're balancing it a bit it's like having a a, a an all night long bonfire you start the fire and maybe you don't have all the wood right away but uh, occasionally you go out and you grab some more wood and you put it on the fire to make sure that it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. So at the end, hopefully you've had the, the fire lasted all night. If it didn't, then uh, hope you weren't cold. Anyway, so that's my some basic philosophy for how to beat on hard in one hour or less. Now, of course, I'm sure that there is a lot more to be said on this. And if you'd like, we can discuss it in the comment section below. Maybe I should start a subreddit. Uh, tell me in the comments, should I start a subreddit so that we can discuss all these things in a different environment? Maybe the comments aren't enough for you. Maybe you should have a subreddit. I don't know. Maybe that's a good idea. Maybe that's a bad idea. But uh, whatever happens, um, hopefully I will we'll be able to do this. Now, what about all this? Why go through all this? Am I actually going to try this? And I'm actually seriously considering it. Um, I might live stream it on Twitch and then uh, re-upload it on YouTube. I don't know. I don't frequently stream on Twitch. I did it once and never again. But uh, you know what? It, it would probably be a great opportunity uh, because 
it essentially is me sitting, playing a game for a one hour sitting, the ideal thing for streaming, I guess. Or I could stream it on YouTube gaming. I don't know though. I don't know how that works so. But uh, anyway, whatever happens, it's going to be a lot harder than what I've been doing so far in my series where it's several hours long and I'm probably not even halfway to winning yet. So anyway, thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I hope that this has been enlightening and I hope this has been thought provoking and I hope that uh, there will be plenty of other ideas out there to help in uh, thinking about ways to win this. Now, of course, as I've said, I still haven't done any on the math on this. I haven't made any flow charts. I haven't made any orders in which to do things. It, but uh, whatever happens, um, wish me luck. Uh, if you would like to try doing this, I wish you luck. And thank you all for watching, and I will be seeing you all next time on Wiltos Over and out.